suggestion that there would be a spare way to do in terms of access and egress from the building by the floorboards. And, and that's a design, surely that's a design issue. Sorry, through you, Chair. I think we're starting to stray into a discussion that should be had with the building regulations um, people. I think mean, clearly says access and egress to the scheme are deemed acceptable in planning and policy terms. All we're looking at at this moment in time is whether or not it's an appropriate scheme in terms of planning, in planning legislation and regulations. If there are other regulations that are needed that prevent the scheme from moving forward, then that's outside of the planning, uh, outside of the planning uh, regulations remit. So you know, they, they wouldn't be able to develop the scheme if they didn't get their building regulations or other permits that are necessary as part of the scheme um, uh, progressing. And it may be that um, the application. Well, well, that's where we are um, in terms of planning. In terms of planning regulations, it, it's an acceptable use of the land. Um, Stuart, so I think I obviously understand your reservations here with the following and ground plan, etc. So, you know, do understand your reservations, but as Matthew's explained, it will be covered and, and it will go ahead unless the bill is not discussed. Okay. That was the clarification. Okay. <coughs> okay, the, the officer's recommendation is to approve the subject to the conditions listed uh, with the amendment from uh, Council Cleary on uh, recycling for uh, point 17 and the uh, two amendments uh, from Matthew at 12 and 18. Uh, do we have a mover on this please? George, seconded, Ron, all those in favour of approval? That's unanimous. That's carried, thank you. Okay, agenda item five and six are site visits. So we're now moving on to agenda item eight, which is pages 47 to 52 in your packs. Could we have a presentation, please? And Tony, I think you're going to leave that in. Thank you. Okay. Tony, if you could just close the door, yes, open, please. Thank you. Kind of key on the outside. There's a key there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. saw the erection of two additional apartments at fourth floor level of this prominent building located on Tower Promenade and Victoria Parade. The building was converted into 30 apartments in 2006 and an identical application for two additional apartments was approved in March 2014. That consent was not implemented and has now lapsed. This application seeks to gain permission for the exact same scheme. There have been no material changes in circumstances in terms of the immediate locality since the last approval and there's been no change in policy. Therefore, the recent grant of planning permission for the exact same proposal is a material consideration that weighs in favour of this current application. There is no additional parking proposed within this scheme, but the site is within walking distance of the railway station, main bus routes and local amenities. There is also on-street parking available outside the apartment block and given the site's sustainable location there are no objections to this proposal on highway grounds. The appearance of the proposed development will have minimal visual impact from the street scene being set back from the main elevations. Having regard to the fact that there has been no material change in circumstances or policy since the 2014 approval for the exact same development and taking all with all national and local planning policies into consideration, it's considered that the proposals are acceptable and recommended for approval. There is no petition in connection with this application. Thank you, Matthew. We don't appear to have a water council here, so we'll open this up to committee. David? I'd like to move approval based on the fact that there's been no material change from the last application that we did approve. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Second, 
That's unanimous, that's carried, thank you. We now move to agenda item 10, which is pages 59 to 64. Thank you, Chris. Okay. Bring Tony back in. No, we're back in when you're ready, because we have a presentation plan. Commission is thought the erection of side and rear extensions, the erection of a link extension to converted outbuildings at the rear, reconfiguration of site access and car parking alterations and revised landscaping. The site is located within the Greenbelt and Bonston Conservation Area. The proposed extensions are single storey and are considered to be proportionate to the footprint of the existing building. Only the single storey side extension would be visible from the adjacent Barson Road and this has been designed with an oak frame and rendered finish to match the existing building. It is not considered that the extensions will detract from the character of the main building or that of the conservation area as a whole. The car park area is proposed to increase from 40 spaces to 53 and the existing access will be slightly, slightly widened to allow for safer access and egress. Despite this increase in parking, the area will, will, the area will be significantly screened by the large bank of trees and hedgerows that is present along the Barnston Road frontage. Some low-level vegetation will be removed and the car parking area will be subject to new landscaping. Overall, the proposals are considered to be acceptable and are recommended for approval. There's no petition in association with this application. Thank you, Matthew. Uh, we don't have a ward councillor here, so I'll open it up to committee. Does anybody else want to make any comments before we move approval? No? Okay, uh, any second, please? Uh, George, all those in favour of, of approval subject to the conditions listed? 12. Those against? 1. Okay, that's carried. Thank you very much. We're going to move now on to agenda item 11, which is pages 65 to 68, and in fact the Gate House Rural Business Centre. Uh, Matthew, can we have a presentation, please? Chair, may I say, I'm not absolutely sure whether I should withdraw for this one. In my ward. No, no, no. No, no, you don't need to withdraw because it's in your ward. Thank you. <clears throat> Planning permission is sought for the change of use of a gatehouse into a takeaway snack bar. The premises have previously been used by a previous owner as a snack bar for some years and therefore this application is largely retrospective, although the unit is currently vacant. The proposal is very small scale in nature and the overall use of the remaining site will be an employment use. The proposal would not restrict the operations of other employment uses or the ongoing supply of available, suitable employment land. The scale of the proposal is very small and is recommended for approval. There is no petition in connection with this application. Thank you, Matthew. Um, there isn't a ward councillor that's come to speak on this, so um, can I just open it up to committee, please? Okay, if nobody else has got any comments, then Ron, you're moving approval. Have a second, please. Yeah. David, all those in favour of approval? That's unanimous, thank you. Okay, um, we're going to have um, agenda item 12, which is a, a judicial review update from our solicitor, please. As the members will be aware, the court decided to foster the five-year planning permission, which was granted in 2011. The situation therefore legally is that the application originally made in April 2010 for permanent planning permission for the marquees stands as undetermined. Therefore, the council now needs to determine that application afresh. The officers will request updated information from the applicant at Bolton Manor to, in order to enable 
that application to be considered and the report and recommendation of the Board Committee is in course. So, yeah, this, this refers to a judicial review which was uh, lodged by Thornton, um, Thornton Hall Hotel with regard to Thornton Manor Hotel. And um, the, as members may be aware, that uh, the outcome of that judicial review was that the Planning Commission, which was originally granted, was quashed. On that point, there are, there are a number of, of, of new members and, and during the course of the back half of last year we were privy to um, emails and what have you that, that uh, linked to the, the judicial review judgment. It might be worth um, this is to send in those, that information out again and I, and I can only apologise for making the suggestion in advance to new members because it's, it's what they are weighty in their book but certainly if people want the history of the background to it, that there have been chains of emails uh, with documentation links, etc. Yes. Which new members might find Yeah, certainly what I'll do is send the judgment, the decision to members, and then if members want me to give them a, a separate briefing on that, I can do that. Yeah, um, thank you, Chair. Just as a point of clarification, what you're really saying is they have been operating this allegedly illegally for quite a while and are now being given the opportunity to put in another planning application for exactly the same thing. No, it's That's not, the way it came over. Can it, you just clarify it's, that it's for me, please? It's not another planning application. Because the original planning commission which was granted has been quashed, the position legally is that the, it's considered that the original planning application has never been determined because the planning commission that was granted has been quashed. So you have then, therefore, a planning application which legally has never been determined. So, it's still got to be determined. so that still has to be determined. So that is the application that was made in 2010, stands as undetermined. So what obviously the planning officers will now require from the applicant is updated information to enable that application to be determined as the thing now stands on the ground and then that will be brought back to committee. So how long have they got to produce this additional? I'm trying to get a handle on how long it will be before this is determined, hopefully properly this time, but how long are we going to have to wait before we get this finally resolved? I'm not asking you to put it down to a single date, but at least some idea, because a lot of people think this has gone on for far too long already. Thank you, through you, Chair, and, and uh, through Cecilia as well. I, I think it's fair to say that up until the point that the permission was quashed by the High Court, there was a permission in place. So there's no allegations that they've been operating anything unlawfully or without consent. The permission was only quashed recently by the High Court. So we now have to revisit that application because, as Cecilia rightly says, um, the permission effectively um, no longer stands. So we have to revisit the application and make a rec recommendation to committee. Um, and as part of that process, we will be seeking updated information um, because I think the last time we brought this to committee was 2010. So um, you know, some time has lapsed since those reports were last considered. Um, so we will be seeking that, um, that those updated reports and we will be giving the, the applicant and their agents um, a reasonable um, time frame to produce those, um, but but it, it, it won't be, um, you know, we're not talking about years to submit the application, and we're, we're talking about a relatively short time frame, but it needs to be reasonable for them to, to do the work appropriately so that the, the committee can be informed. So just a final point, so to clarify, they are continuing to operate legally in arranged functions until such time as we might determine that what they're doing is wrong, in simple terms. It's, it's a, I don't want to get into the talk about legality. No, all right, well, sorry, but well, alleged problem. Let's yeah. get the word legality. Yeah. Um, there is a, a planning application which needs to be determined. 
understand. Yeah, I understand that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Sorry to cut across. I think we need to be very careful of our, uh, about what we say to committee yeah. because we don't want to lead committee in terms of determining an application that might be presented to you in, presented to you in the very near future. So it really is just an update for you to know where we are, to let you know that the application, uh, the permission has been quashed and needs to be redetermined, and we'll be bringing it to the committee in the near future. Thank you for clarifying. Yeah. And of course, members want to be in a position where they. Yeah, without predetermination. Exactly. Yeah. Pre I'm okay, my question is answered. Okay, uh, just take a final question for me then. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, what we've heard tonight, I have to say, differs greatly from what we've heard so far on this committee in terms of the advice and information we've been given. I was under the impression from this application, there's an application that we granted several years ago, a temporary, uh, temporary construction of marquees. Because we haven't enforced the removal of that temporary uh, permission, the, uh, the, the applicants, sorry, the, the, this organisation continued to operate, and then others had sought a judicial review of our failure to enforce the removal of those temporary marquees. And the judicial review found that we were at fault and gave the applicant, the, the organisation, until the 19th of May to appeal that decision or face enforcement. That's what we were told at the last planning committee meeting. That the, it was a temp they were given temporary permission, it wasn't it hadn't been undetermined, but it, it was given temporary permission and we had never enforced compliance with the being temporary. That's what we've been told by the by, by on this committee. Okay, I, mean, I think the, the situation was that a permission was granted and it was given five years. Well, I'm starting to stray into um, an area really that's that's almost leading committee in terms of, of, of what you might be asked to to make a decision on when it comes in front of you in the near future. But, but essentially there was a permission in place. A decision notice was issued that had no conditions attached to it. Um, and, and Thornton Hall sought to challenge that, that decision. That decision was then quashed by the, um, by the High Court and the High Court have referred it back to the local planning authority to determine that application. So as it stands, we go back to the 2010 Commission, which committee will be asked to revisit. Concepts with this chair because one, 
it's not subject to a current legal case because the legal case is being decided, conclusions have been made, so we're not ultra virus or you know, outside the judicial process at the moment because a decision has been made. The decision that was made is that this business should not be operating there. No, no, so that, that isn't the decision that was made. The decision that was made was that the planning commission, which was granted, <coughs> had to be quashed because it was a defective planning commission. That is not, so what is, the situation is now that there is a planning application which was put before us in 2010, which stands undetermined. And therefore there is a planning application which needs now to be decided. That is the legal position. Yes. Yes. And, but meanwhile, they should continue to operate. Because they have a planning application in place, you know, how we need to consider that planning application. And I'm happy to discuss it further with you, but that is the, the, the legal position. Yeah. Through, through you, Chair. My understanding was that um, when. That, can I just stop you there? Yes. Because I think everybody's sort of like um, putting their own bits forward That's about their right. understanding of things. I think the important thing is here is that we have a full review because yeah, there's been a lot of time between these different reports and you know, memories maybe. The only point I wanted to make was that uh, the original application in 2010 that was a Section 106 agreement was entered into and signed by the Board Solicitor and the Board of Parties. And therefore, uh, the fact that the, uh, and obviously the legal position is, is as it is, um, but what I don't understand is if the application was determined at the planning committee meeting and the planning committee voted that it was a five-year temporary marquee with the section one of six agreements signed and agreed to uh, from a lay person's point of view. I don't understand why the application was deemed, uh, well, I can understand that the, from a legal point of view it's deemed to be quashed, um, but, that it, but I can't get my head around the fact that you're saying that the original application was deemed not to have been determined because the planning committee did determine it. It's the fact that the the application when it went out to the to Fort Manor went out without the conditions on, but those conditions were still in the 106 agreement, which was still signed as a party to the agreement. That's what you're talking about. That's what I don't understand. Yeah, I, I understand the the legal position is that if there is a planning application where you then grant a planning commission but that commission is subsequently quashed, it's as if that commission, I know you've been before the committee, it's as if that commission has never been approved. So you have a planning application that is still needs to be determined. And you know, the council has, it doesn't happen very often, but we have had situations before where there have been similar circumstances, and that is the legal position. Um, I'll bring you in in a second, John, but what I was going to say, yeah. Cathy, is that I think you know everybody's got sort of their own recollection of different things here, and it has been over a period of time, and my suggestion is that we have a chronological order of events um, provided yes. uh, based based on um, what's been a, what we've had an update on uh, for not just for new members but for all members of the committee, so that we we've got that clearly written down about what was going to happen by when and where we are today. Yes, okay, Ron, was there anything else you wanted to yeah, say? I was just saying I was very comfortable with this conversation because different people have got different uh, sort of, uh, yeah. understanding of what has happened and that's what's happened yeah. in the interim period. A lot of us haven't had any interest in this, this um, application throughout the period in this life, but it was it, whether it was valid or not valid one. So I think you know that conversation is getting to the people around for me. Yeah. I don't like to speak discussions yeah. that have the people discuss them. But we're not all the same level of knowledge. And I think that's, that's why I've made that suggestion if we get that chronological yeah. order. Okay, so thank you for your update, prolonged as it was, but I, I, I think you know, we've obviously got a situation where there is a lack of true understanding of 
what, what, what's going on. So if we can have that chronologically worked out, that would be great. Yeah. Just, just while we mentioned it, in fact, the borough solicitor did mention it. Could we have a very brief update on the situation with Hillbark, or is that something for another meeting? I, I can say that obviously that there is a um, at that moment the um, period during which the planning and um, the enforcement papers has now expired. Um, there is there has been a planning application made at the moment, which is um, being processed. And we will be contacting the developer further on that. Again, the, the, the applicant on the other There is a new application here on Hillbar, but it's currently invalid. Um, so we can't process it until that application is valid. No, but it is in, but it's currently invalid. wouldn't take enforcement action and we won't take enforcement action whilst there's a, a, a current application submitted because in the event of an appeal the council will be held as being as acting um, unreasonably. The judicial review is nothing to do with Hillbar. We're, only, we're talking about Hillbar now. Okay. Council Relator raised the point about Hillbar. Okay, I'm going to move on to focus. Um, agenda item 13, which is pages 69 to 102 in your packs, with the planning applications decided under de delegated powers. Uh, we're asked to, to note these. Are there any comments before we know from? Besides that, there are a couple of, um, of these which haven't got a board uh, mentioned against them. Um, and, and just for, for new members' um, point of view, um, sometimes you will see that there's an applicant and an agent, and in other cases you'll see there's an applicant and no agent. Um, and that will be because the applicant has decided not to take up an agent um, to, to look at this particular planning application. Okay, so are we happy to note those, noting that there are some errors? Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you very much, committee, for your contribution. Yeah.